Assalamu alaikum everyone, welcome to my home gardening channel. This is Sabr Shah here. Today I will talk about intercropping. It means how to have two different kinds of crops at one place. So I will talk about the advantages and disadvantages uh, with the examples from my garden. And uh, we will see uh, how I use intercropping, how other people use, and overall, what's the advantage. And I'll also talk about congested seedings, means no spacing between the plants. Some of the crops, they don't need any spacing, so we'll talk about that as well. So, let's get started. Let's get to my garden. So, I'll start from my first bed. Now, you can see that I have placed tomato plants on the sides and there are one, two, three, four, five. There was a sixth one, I think it, it just didn't appear. Okay, so five plants in between, there's not much spacing, okay? And then you could see almost one hand apart, that's around one foot away. There are one, two, three, four, five, and six plants too. Then again, one foot away, one, two, three, four, five, and six plants. So now they are gonna grow bigger. So I'm, I'm, I'm interested in the first crop of these. And as soon as I get the first flowers, I'm going to remove the tops and do not let them grow because I just want the first crop. Uh, each, each plant is going to give me at least half a kilo. So 18 plants, 9 kilos, enough. Okay, so that's my, I'm not going to let them grow really tall. They are the uh what you call indeterminate tomatoes so they grow really wild so as you can see first flower they're coming out cherry tomatoes now in between what i've done these are pepper plants and you could see they're also at the same spacing all together two in a row two at one spot and two in one row so 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 16. And then 16 here. 32 plants of peppers. That's a bit too much, right? But I will let you know what, again, I'm interested in, in the, uh, the tertiary growth of these ones. So once they grow up till at least 8 to 10 uh, leaves, uh, like this tall, these are old ones. I'm gonna cut the tops, let the secondary growth come out, cut the tops, and wait for the food on the top. So these ones are gonna be taller than the tomatoes, so no problem at all. And 32 here, and main ones two here, and two over there, four. Okay, so that's 36. Then I put some cucumbers, one, two, three, and four cucumbers and they have distance of two feet because they're gonna grow taller so cucumbers are gonna be the tallest ones peppers number two then comes the tomatoes number three so that's their height just today I have planted carrots all around here in this circle so carrots they don't need to grow taller they need to grow into the ground and they don't fight with anything else so in one bed in this bed I have 50 plants this is called intercropping now what you can't do in intercropping is that all your fruit is gonna be minimum it would be under minimal conditions so you have to be uh, content on getting the fruit you won't get much fruit but the quality of the fruit will be good so this is my aim quality over quantity that's one 
Now let's get to the other bed. Here I'm only growing tomatoes and you can see they are already pretty tall now. And here there is no intercropping. It's only the, the tomato plants here. Now the distance between them, because these are gonna grow taller. I want to let them grow as tall as they can. So you can see they're pretty much at the same height, all of them. Uh, how many plants? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Eight plants in a bigger bed than the one I showed you just now. And the distance between them is around a hand and a half. So it's around uh, 45 centimeters. And they're gonna grow single stem, and then they're gonna grow, grow taller and taller. So here, what I've done is, again, in the bottom, I have grown, see, you can see the carrot seedlings. If you can see my hand, you could see it. So carrots are at the bottom, which are gonna grow down, and tomatoes are gonna grow up. So these are gonna grow much taller, and fruit would be a lot. Quality, I'm not sure, but a lot of fruit. And besides, I have carrots in separate boxes, and pak choy in separate boxes for my rabbit and some flowers are growing like sunflowers occasionally two or three at one place so you could see in this box is just for the vegetables pak choy so that's the proper spacing one there it is now let's go to the third one okay so that's another tomato bed and uh, here you can see i'm growing garlic in between so the garlic is going to cover up the ground and again garlic goes down tomatoes goes up so i don't have any problems with these two growing together suckers out you have to remove the suckers suckers are between the main node and the side node whatever grows in between you have to remove it apart from the top one you can't remove this one because that's not a sucker. This grows the plant taller and taller. That's bed number two again for tomatoes. You can see I have a lot of tomatoes this year. By the way, a lot. I consume most of them, but I still have hundreds of newly grown. But these are all the backup ones because in July we're going to get heavy rains and plants get destroyed. So these will be the backup. So I'm just going to keep them here. So here again, again garlic is the intercrop. Garlic is gonna grow in between the lines. Uh, there's one uh, watermelon plant, it's just not looking so happy here. Again, it's too much sunlight for it. It needs shady, but I'm just growing it for experiment. Oh, it's flowering, nice. Well, anyway, even if the watermelon comes up, it's gonna go up through this one and it's gonna go on my shelf. So this shelf is all for pumpkins and watermelon and stuff like that. So this is tomato plus garlic. Now let's come here. This one is pretty interesting. This one is the tomatoes. Now, now you can see they're very short here. Reason being I just filled this one up and uh, got from my transplants from this one. So they're just, just, just getting used to this new bed and uh, you can see there are beans here uh, the fresh beans are gonna grow you can see they're already shooting and the beans are gonna go up again on these trellises they're gonna go this way so and the bottom leaves of the of the beans would not be remained they would be cut so Beans can totally, because they don't need much energy, much uh, nutrition, so they just, they just grow. So here I have around 20 <laughs> fresh beans plants and uh, they can grow together as well with the tomatoes. So this is how it's going to grow up. This is my peppers bed. You can see I put two very close to each other, then a distance. and. Uh, one here, one in the middle, one on this corner, one on that corner. So one, two, three, four, and five. 
these two are very close to each other, pepper plants can stay closer to each other, no problem at all. But if you have two very close to each other, try to have the second one a little far away. You can have two more here. And uh, like you can see, I have two there, one here and one there, because the other one died for various reasons. Uh, these are just the lemon uh, seeds. <laughs> uh, they are in the cups, by the way. They are not, uh, I'm just growing their roots because I need lemons as well. The lemons are gonna be like this tall. So that's the lemon tree. Uh, it's into its second year. It's not gonna fruit for a couple of more years. But I mean, that's my aim is to get a proper healthy lemon tree. This is going very well. In winter, I take it in. I mean, with just one winter. It's actually the winter growth. It was grown inside and then kept outside. Let's get to the next bed. This one is my eggplant. So, one, two, uh, three, then four, five, and six. So that's my main crop, eggplants, I'm gonna grow here. In between you could see sunflowers, right? So these are all sunflowers, I think I did show them. And these sunflowers, they're already flowering now. They're gonna grow really tall, but the sunlight is coming from that side, so no problem. And these sunflowers are not gonna have a competition with the eggplants. And you could see some other flowers I've put inside just for pollination. They don't take much spaces. They don't take much uh, of the somebody's for the bees to come. And there is a bitter gourd coming up here. So these things can always go together because this gourd is gonna go up through this stick. I will add one more and connect it to this trellis. There is another bitter gourd coming up from there. Uh, behind this wooden thingy there so this is gonna go up on this fellas and the grapevine hopefully it grows it's a new home for it first timer in this place and it's gonna join the other side of the trellis there so for these uh, yes and then the onions so you could see the onions are growing here and again, onions take the ground. These are the last year onions, so see, you can see they're flowering now. So I'm keep them for flowering only. So they're not going to fruit. If I cut it, then the fruit is going to be there, but I want the seeds. So that's why onions, sunflowers, eggplants, and some flowers, and the bitter gourd, they can all go in one place. This is my flowering bed. so. I don't do much here. Flowers just grow and grow and grow. Doesn't matter. Flowers, you can use fertilizer here. So I use the chemical fertilizers here so just to let them grow well. So they're growing pretty well. No chemical fertilizers on this area. Nothing on this area. Nothing on that area. This one is my cucumber field. So the main crop is cucumbers. Cucumbers cucumbers so you could see one two three four and five and then here six seven and eight then nine ten eleven and twelve and thirteen so these are gonna go up this trellis it's gonna be a kind of rooftop for them and again I'm just keeping some flowers I put some sunflowers here because they're gonna help the cucumber grow up till the top of the trellis here so some flowers for again for pollination backup plant is here I have these are the backup cucumbers uh, so they are gonna be replaced if any of the major ones they get rained or something like that now oh, these are all flowers by the way so that's my coriander and lettuce little garden <laughs> No, this is just for that, that, this guy. You can see him, he is happy. He enjoys three times of fresh veggies every day. 
getting bigger. Oh, it was his birthday. Happy birthday, Kalu. <laughs> and that's it. So some of the flowers. Well, that's my cutting from downstairs. The plums. It, it is, it is um, leaving now. Leafing. And these are the violets. Uh, Dahlia. 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 Violet. Marigolds. They're going to go in ground once they get bigger enough. Ooh. That's another one. Okay. And again, I have some new seeds here. Uh, yeah, about the grapes. Yeah, all of these grapes I bought uh, this year. So they have the main line. The grafting was here. So this is going to be the uh, the main line. And these are going to become canes next year. I will explain next year actually that why I'm leaving these. I'm not interested in fruit this year. So let them. I let them grow and then keep four or five when they all dry up in fall i'll just keep uh try to keep four or five of these nodes i will let you know at, at that time uh, i have no idea what this i bought i think it's the oh yeah it was the the the, the scotch uh, what you call the honeydew melon uh, these are all the male leaves Male leaves are useless at the moment because we don't have any female leaves. Female leaves have a little, uh, little uh, melon at their butt. So no male leaves of female leaves, so not interested in them. So here, they're again intercropping. The watermelon and the grapes are growing in the same pot. And then here, uh, this one is also the it's uh, the honeydew melon it's growing with the grapes and again this is also a new cuttings I, I brought so there's the main stem divided into a Y here and now the canes are growing on this so once these canes grow tall enough there are three one two three I have removed all the bottom growth I just want to keep it growing to the top. So we're just gonna go along this trellis and get onto the bigger trellis here. And again, there's a more, um, you know, there's a watermelon plant here, some peas growing, and the grapes. This is another variety of grapes. This was also single stem grafted. And again, I'm growing canes. So this is gonna be my next year fruiting uh, stick and this is also going to be my next year fruiting stick. So the fruit is going to grow vertically uh, Horizontally in this case on these ones and here I have pumpkins again and Strawberries pumpkin strawberries are in one pot This big you can see how big is it? almost two feet tall and I think the same in diameter. And then there's my mint. It's going separately. It used to be there. So I just plucked it out and put it in this pot. So this is going to be pumpkin zone only. I don't want to mix pumpkin with anything else. Sorry. Mint. Mint. This is going to be the mint pot. Then I have this uh, pot here with only one cucumber growing in so this is going to be the cucumber going it's going to go up with this thingy and fruit along this one there are my fruit trees uh, peaches are getting really nice they're getting bigger it's healthy blueberries pretty much growing apricot i still have only one apricot and uh, cherries Still waiting for cherries to grow, the flowers, you no, know, and plums. Uh, all of them were fell because of the heavy rains. So no plums, no apples, no cherries, one apricot, no blueberries, and a few peaches. So this is all about today's update about intercropping. So see you next time. Allah Hafiz.